there are many, many exciting things that are happening in the field of sarcoma. So obviously, we're realizing that both phytogenetically and evolutionarily, sarcomas can be now classified into broad groups. And, and in fact, um, there is, there's some very exciting work that came out of Dana-Farber which, which helped us understand certain groups of sarcomas. Um, you know, usually we would look at them under histology, so we would say they're more like muscles, they're rhabdomyosarcomas, sarcomas, they're more like fats or liposarcomas. But we're finding that there are certain groups of sarcomas that are closer to each other versus certain groups of sarcomas that are farther apart. And the reason that's important is because traditionally sarcomas were always considered, you know, with a very standard paradigm, which is surgery, maybe radiation, and adjuvant chemotherapy has always been a little bit plus minus in terms of thinking about wh how well it works for sarcomas. But I think by trying to club these tumors together, we're able to kind of understand better how to treat them. I think there's amazing advances in imaging, so especially diffus diffusion weighted imaging, especially for retroperitoneal sarcomas, where we can actually use diffusion characteristics. As you know, diffusion weighted imaging relies on the water content of cells. And it's, it's remarkable for our ability to be able to detect some areas of malignancy versus not within sarcomas and even potentially guide biopsies and potentially pre-treatment paradigms.